before we dive into today's discussion, we have a special resource just for you, a free ebook called Does It Make Sense to Believe in God? In today's world where faith is often labeled as outdated or irrational, this ebook takes a fresh look at the evidence for God. It features reflections from years of engaging with some of the world's leading atheists, like Richard Dawkins, and reveals why, after hearing every conceivable argument, our confidence in God's existence is stronger than ever. Download Does It Make Sense to Believe in God today for free at premierinsight.org forward slash resources. That's premierinsight.org forward slash resources. Now, let's get started with today's show. The Bible in a Year, bringing the Word to life. Father God, as we come to listen to your Word, help us in this moment to be still and to know that you are God, to receive the gift of peace that you promise us in your Word. Amen. Proverbs chapter 26 verse 23 to chapter 27 verse 4. Like a coating of silver dross on earthenware are fervent lips with an evil heart. Enemies disguise themselves with their lips, but in their hearts they harbour deceit. Though their speech is charming, do not believe them, for seven abominations fill their hearts. Their malice may be concealed by deception, but their wickedness will be exposed in the assembly. Whoever digs a pit will fall into it. If someone rolls a stone, it will roll back on them. A lying tongue hates those it hurts, and a flattering mouth works ruin. Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring. Let someone else praise you, and not your own mouth, an outsider, and not your own lips. Stone is heavy, and sand a burden, but a fool's provocation is heavier than both. Anger is cruel and fury overwhelming, but who can stand before jealousy? Hebrews chapter 5 verse 11 to chapter 6 verse 12 We have much to say about this, but it is hard to make it clear to you because you no longer try to understand. In fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers... You need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. Anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. But solid food is for the mature, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. Chapter 6 Therefore, let us move beyond the elementary teachings about Christ and be taken forward to maturity, not laying again the foundation of repentance from acts that lead to death and of faith in God, instruction about cleansing rites, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment. And God permitting, we will do so. It is impossible for those who have once been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift, who have shared in the Holy Spirit, who have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the powers of the coming age, and who have fallen away to be brought back to repentance. To their loss, they are crucifying the Son of God all over again and subjecting him to public disgrace. 
land that drinks in the rain often falling on it, and that produces a crop useful to those for whom it is formed, receives the blessing of God. But land that produces thorns and thistles is worthless, and is in danger of being cursed. In the end, it will be burned. Even though we speak like this, dear friends, we are convinced of better things in your case. The things that have to do with salvation. God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown him, as you have helped his people and continue to help them. We want each of you to show this same diligence to the very end, so that what you hope for may be fully realised. We do not want you to become lazy, but to imitate those who, through faith and patience, inherit what has been promised. Ezekiel chapters 4, 5 and 6 Now, son of man, take a block of clay, put it in front of you, and draw the city of Jerusalem on it. Then lay siege to it. Erect siege works against it, build a ramp up to it, set camps against it, and put battering rams around it. Then take an iron pan, place it as an iron wall between you and the city, and turn your face towards it. It will be under siege, and you shall besiege it. This will be a sign to the people of Israel. Then lie on your left side, and put the sin of the people of Israel upon yourself. You are able to bear their sin for the number of days you lie on your side. I have assigned you the same number of days as the years of their sin. So, for 390 days, you will bear the sin of the people of Israel. After you have finished this, lie down again, this time on your right side, and bear the sin of the people of Judah. I have assigned you 40 days a day for each year. Turn your face towards the siege of Jerusalem and with bared arm prophesy against her. I will tie you up with ropes so that you cannot turn from one side to the other until you have finished the days of your siege. Take wheat and barley, beans and lentils, millet and spelt, put them in a storage jar and use them to make bread for yourself. You are able to eat it during the 390 days you lie on your side. Weigh out 20 shekels of food to eat each day, and eat it at set times. Also, measure out a sixth of a hin of water, and drink it at set times. Eat the food as you would a loaf of barley bread. Bake it in sight of the people, using human excrement for fuel. The Lord said, In this way, the people of Israel will eat defiled food among the nations where I will drive them. Then I said, Not so, Sovereign Lord, I have never defiled myself. From my youth until now, I have never eaten anything found dead or torn by wild animals. No impure meat has ever entered my mouth. Very well, he said. I will let you break your bread over cow dung instead of human excrement. He then said to me, Son of man, I am about to cut off the food supply in Jerusalem. The people will eat rationed food in anxiety and drink rationed water in despair, for food and water will be scarce. They will be appalled at the sight of each other and will waste away because of their sin. Ezekiel chapter 5 Now, son of man, take a sharp sword and use it as a barber's razor to shave your head and your beard. Then take a set of scales and divide up your hair. When the days of your siege come to an end, burn a third of your hair inside the city. Take a third and strike it with the sword all around the city, and scatter a third to the wind, for I will pursue them with drawn sword. But take a few hairs, and tuck them away in the folds of your garment. 
Again, take a few of these and throw them into the fire and burn them up. A fire will spread from there to all Israel. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. This is Jerusalem, which I have set in the centre of the nations, with countries all around her. Yet, in her wickedness, she has rebelled against my laws and decrees more than the nations and countries around her. She has rejected my laws and not followed my decrees. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. You have been more unruly than the nations around you and have not followed my decrees or kept my laws. You have not even conformed to the standards of the nations around you. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. I myself am against you, Jerusalem, and I will inflict punishment on you in the sight of the nations. Because of all your detestable idols, I will do to you what I have never done before, and will never do again. Therefore, in your midst, parents will eat their children, and children will eat their parents. I will inflict punishment on you, and will scatter all your survivors to the winds. Therefore, as surely as I live, declares the Sovereign Lord, because you have defiled my sanctuary with all your vile images and detestable practices, I myself will shave you. I will not look on you with pity or spare you. A third of your people will die of the plague or perish by famine inside you. A third will fall by the sword outside your walls. And a third I will scatter to the winds and pursue with drawn sword. Then my anger will cease and my wrath against them will subside and I will be avenged. And when I have spent my wrath on them, they will know that I, the Lord, have spoken in my zeal. I will make you a ruin and a reproach among the nations around you, in the sight of all who pass by. You will be a reproach and a taunt, a warning and an object of horror to the nations around you, when I inflict punishment on you in anger and in wrath and with stinging rebuke. I, the Lord, have spoken. When I shoot at you with my deadly and destructive arrows of famine, I will shoot to destroy you. I will bring more and more famine upon you and cut off your supply of food. I will send famine and wild beasts against you and they will leave you childless. Plague and bloodshed will sweep through you and I will bring the sword against you. I, the Lord, have spoken. Ezekiel chapter 6 The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, set your face against the mountains of Israel. Prophesy against them and say, You mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Sovereign Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says to the mountains and hills to the ravines and valleys. I am about to bring a sword against you, and I will destroy your high places. Your altars will be demolished, and your incense altars will be smashed, and I will slay your people in front of your idols. I will lay the dead bodies of the Israelites in front of their idols, and I will scatter your bones around your altars. Wherever you live, the towns will be laid waste, and the high places demolished, so that your altars will be laid waste and devastated, your idols smashed and ruined, your incense altars broken down, and what you have made wiped out. Your people will fall slain among you, and you will know that I am the Lord. But I will spare some, for some of you will escape the sword when you are scattered among the lands and nations. Then, in the nations where they have been carried captive, those who escape will remember me. 
how I have been grieved by their adulterous hearts, which have turned away from me, and by their eyes, which have lusted after their idols. They will loathe themselves for the evil they have done, and for all their detestable practices. And they will know I am the Lord. I did not threaten in vain to bring this calamity on them. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Strike your hands together and stamp your feet and cry out, Alas, because of all the wicked and detestable practices of the people of Israel, for they will fall by the sword, famine and plague. One who is far away will die of the plague, and one who is near will fall by the sword, and anyone who survives and is spared will die of famine. So will I pour out my wrath on them, and they will know I am the Lord, when their people lie slain among their idols, around their altars, on every high hill and on all the mountain tops, under every spreading tree and every leafy oak, places where they offered fragrant incense to all their idols. And I will stretch out my hand against them and make the land a desolate waste, from the desert to Diblar. Wherever they live, then they will know that I am the Lord. Father God, thank you for the Bible. Thank you that your love endures forever. Teach us to rejoice because in your love you rejoice over us. Your love never fails. Help us to accept your love and share it with others. Amen. For more resources to help you bring the word to life, go to premier.org.uk forward slash Bible. This reading has been taken from the NIV Bible Biblica and is published by Hodder and Stoughton.